Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And I have recently bought a used RG LIZ1 Extreme, and now I'm going to upgrade the battery to an 80 watt hour and to a 1 terabyte hard drive or SSD. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, a couple of the shortfalls with the ROG Ally, especially this model, is that it only comes with a 40 watt hour battery. That's going to give you about an hour and a half of playtime when you're using the max power settings. So, where this one is used, it's actually worse off because it only has about 33 hour, watt hours of charge. So, I get about an hour of playtime with the max power settings. Now, upgrading to the 80 watt hour, I should get between two and a half and three hours, hopefully. Now the other issue that uh, I have with this one specifically as has to do with I think they might have fixed it but with this being one of the older models is that the SD card reader on here is fried. It sits just below the exhaust. It has a tendency to overheat and fry the reader. So this one no longer works and the 512 gigabyte NVMe drive that comes with it is just not enough storage. So I'm going to be upgrading this to a one terabyte uh, M.2 NVMe. And by going with the 2280 size, uh, you get more variety to choose from from which one you want to go with. Uh, what's in here is the 2230, so it's a little smaller M.2 drive. So if you do plan on upgrading and using one of the larger M.2 drives, you need to get an adapter. So I'll show you how to install this as well. They're pretty cheap. I think I got this for like 10 bucks. And that way I get full speed access to whatever I have, any games I have on here. Um, going with an SD card reader, those SD cards are not overly fast. Uh, they're very slow compared to M.2 drives, so everything should be a lot snappier having everything saved on the M.2 drive. And when you start getting into the larger 2 terabyte drives, the 2280s are substantially cheaper than getting a 2 terabyte 2230. Alright, to start off, I want to make sure this is turned off. And we're going to go flip it over to the back. Um, yeah, it looks kind of dirty. There was a uh, whatever rubber grip that was held on with uh, like not too sticky of an adhesive, but it left a lot of crap left over. I've been trying to pick it off ever since I got it, but it is taking a lot of time. So the kit I have came with all of uh, everything you need, but these are looking pretty, pretty crappy. So we have all of these screws that you can see. There's six in total that we need to unscrew. Now those are loosened. It also comes with a spudger. There we go. Just gonna slide it all the way around. And everything should just pop right out nice and easy. go. Get, I remove this piece of or whatever it is, little protector cover thingy. Now right here is a little metal um, connector that's holding that power connector it down. We need to use the plastic spudger. Just push it forward. We're going to go underneath the wires plastic spudger so we don't break anything you just kind of lift up and that should disconnect so now we have four screws that we need to remove there's two on the sides here and then there's two right here one of them has a little sticker on it screw this one screw. don't get them mixed up some of them are different sizes so that's a short one that's a long one Gently going to lift this ribbon up. And 
now this should just come right out. Perfect. So there's the old, new battery and this is the old one. Uh, there's a couple of foam spacers on here to hold it in place. But in the middle here, you can tell it's a lot bigger and we're gonna have to trim this plastic off so this can fit in there. So they provide these little snipper tools to remove all of this. So this is what it looks like after you clip everything away and I highly recommend wearing protective glasses because pieces do go flying while you're snipping them away. Then next on here, we have a little piece right there and a little piece right there sticking up and they need to be clipped as well. While the battery is out, we're gonna take the M.2 drive out. Just lift this up and kind of use your fingernail to pull this back. There we go. Now that that's out, we'll put the new battery pack in. This isn't in with glue or anything like that, so it's gonna slide around, so you do need to be careful. So again, we're gonna do what we did in reverse, so make sure that is open. Then we're just gonna slide this in to the connector. Okay, now it's lined up and pushed down. A little more forcefully. I'm going to push the clip back over to hold it in place. And so now that that's in place, we're going to put the adapter in. No, it'll be in place when it's aligned with the screw hole. And these cables are gonna push it up just a little bit. I'm gonna get the battery back and lined up. Install the M.2 drive. Secure that right there. All right, now that everything is installed and lined up, there's nothing holding the sides back on, so we don't need to install those screws. But we will need to install the screws here by the fans. Now it's time to put the cover back on. Just line everything up and click it into place. And there we go. Time to tighten everything up. Now for the M.2 drive, there's two things you can do. One, you could have cloned it and put everything that was on your existing drive onto this. And from what I've read, you can start from scratch. When we boot this up, it's gonna boot in the BIOS, and then it'll download the operating system onto the SSD from there. So I had to plug it in to get it to turn on. We're at 79%, it's charging. So once you're in the BIOS, we're gonna to go to Advanced. I'm gonna to go back and we're gonna go Aces Cloud Recovery. Agree, cloud recovery. Now that we're connected to Wi Fi, we're going to continue. Next, and we're going to let it do its thing. So, there you go. It's probably going to take a little while, but after you're done downloading everything, you can just go through the motions of logging in. Uh, using your email address and all that and you'll have yourself an upgraded 
ROG Ally with a little bit more life uh, breathed into it, having a better battery and bigger uh, hard drive. All right, so after two hours of waiting for the whole installation process to finish, I can double check now and my watt hours are now up to 77, which is more than double what I initially had. And I now have 930 gigabytes of storage with 858 free. So all the software that is loaded on is taking up 70, a little over 70 gigabytes of data.